I still remember the date. It was the 18th of December, 2017. The day I went to watch the last match of the test series, Australia vs. England, with my sister. My sister and I are huge cricket fans. My favorite player is Steve Smith, who eventually became player of this series. I went to watch this match just to see his extraordinary playing skills. The match was held in WACA ground in East Perth, Western Australia. My sister's boyfriend knew someone from Stadium Authority. He managed to get us two front row tickets. I was very excited about the whole day. I thought watching Smith playing live for the first time is going to be a dream come true. My sister took the day off from the office and we left for the stadium in the evening. Our house wasn't far from the stadium, so it only took us 20 minutes to reach there. There were huge crowds of people lining up outside the stadium. Most of them were Australian supporters. I could see yellow jerseys flooding all over the entry gate. I wore an Australian jersey too. I bought it online, especially for this moment. My sister told me to wait on the line and went to park the car in the parking lot. I could hear people cheering for Australia even before the match began. Everyone was clicking pictures, posing in front of the Australian team placards kept outside the stadium. When my sister returned, I told her to click my photo with the placard of Steve Smith put up near the stadium gate. We showed our tickets to the guards and entered the stadium. As far as my eyes went, I could only see the heads of people. The entire environment felt amazing. Fans were cheering. The mics were broadcasting commentaries. The huge LED screen started to highlight the green, vast ground in front of my eyes. I was completely overwhelmed with joy. This was my first live cricket match, and I was cheering with the top of my lungs for my team, Australia. The umpire called the captains of both teams for the toss. The crowd got louder as soon as Steve Smith entered the ground. England won the toss, and they decided to bat. We sipped cold drinks and munched popcorn while watching this exciting match. My sister and I clicked a dozen pictures, and we were having a great time. I couldn't realize how time flew away. I drank a lot of cold drinks and suddenly felt the need to go to the bathroom. There was still time for the interval, but I was having an emergency, so I told my sister, I need to go to the bathroom. She asked me, Will I be able to go alone or not? I confronted her saying, I will be absolutely fine. My plan was to go to the washroom and get back to my seat as soon as possible. I didn't want to miss Smith no matter what. So I got up and made my way to the exit, walking amongst the crowd. After reaching the exit gate, I saw a security guard standing there. I went to him and asked, which way is the women's washroom? He pointed towards a long hallway to my left and said the washroom is at the end of the hall. I started to walk down the hallway. The cheering of the audience was resonating in the entire hallway. Every time the audience clapped in joy, the stadium reverberated. But as I walked away from the exit ground, the sounds of the stadium kept fading away. It was a long, wide passage surrounded by white walls. Tube lights were hanging from the ceiling. Some of the lights were flickering as I walked towards the bathroom. The washroom was completely empty. I went to the third bathroom on the right side. As I locked the door and sat down to do my business, I heard a sound. It felt like someone just entered the bathroom next to mine. I already said the hallway was long and wide, hence, if someone else entered this area, she has to enter with me. There was no way someone could walk the hallway without being noticed by me this entire time. Anyways, I decided to finish off quickly and get back to my seat. I was just about to get out when I heard a soft sobbing sound from the bathroom next to mine. I unlocked the door and came out. The washroom lights were flickering in a very spooky manner. There was no sound except the sound of water dripping from the tap. I paused and tried to listen closely. There was no sign of another person inside the washroom. I started to wash my hands just when I heard someone weeping again. The weeping voice of a woman was coming from the bathroom beside mine. I noticed the door of that bathroom was locked from the inside. I walked towards it and knocked on the bathroom door. I asked in a tense voice, Ma'am, 
Are you all right? <laughs> no answer came, but her weeping grew louder. I realized there was a woman inside this bathroom. I knocked again and said, Do you need any help? This time, the woman started to cry out loud. I felt like she was going through a lot of pain. I didn't know what to do. I again knocked on the door and said, Do you want me to call the security? Is everything fine? This time, her cry changed into growling. I panicked, thinking she might be feeling sick or something really bad has happened to her. I started to bang on the door with my wrist. After four or five thuds, the door lock opened with a clinking sound on its own. I felt relief, thinking she finally opened the door and now I can see what's the matter with her. I pushed the door with my hand and saw a woman sitting on the toilet seat. The lights were flickering so much that it was being very difficult for me to notice her properly. She was hiding her face into her palms. I asked, Hey, are you all right? Suddenly, the lights stopped flickering and what I saw almost gave me a heart attack. Her wrists were slashed with a sharp knife-like object. The cuts were so deep that I could almost see her red flesh. Blood was dripping from those cuts. The floor underneath her was all covered with blood. I gasped and took a few steps back. I wanted to run, but something trapped my leg on the ground. I breathed heavily and said, What are you doing? She then lifted her face and looked directly into my eyes. I have never seen such a vicious face. Her eyes were bursting out of her eye sockets. Her mouth was filled with blood. She opened her mouth as blood came gushing out of it. I ran towards the door, but it slammed on its own and got locked. I started to twist the handle, but the door wasn't open. I kicked the door. I started to scream, but nothing was happening. I turned back and saw the woman coming out of the bathroom crawling on the floor. My legs couldn't hold my body anymore. I fell to the ground. I was gasping for air. The blood in my veins started to turn cold. She kept crawling towards me like an animal. It was a horrible sight to witness. The more she crawled on the ground, the more blood kept spilling out of her wrist and mouth. I tried to scream, but no sound came out of my mouth. When she was just two hands distance away from me, I heard someone twisting the doorknob. The door opened, and as I slowly fainted, I saw my sister standing near me. I woke up in the hospital the next morning. My parents were sitting right beside my bed. I saw my sister talking to the doctor. They all looked very worried. I heard from my sister that she came to look for me after noticing I was taking too much time in the washroom. When she reached the washroom, she saw the door was closed. As she pushed the door to open, she saw me lying unconscious on the floor near the door. The stadium authority called for an ambulance and my sister admitted me to the hospital. The doctors said I had a nervous breakdown due to a sudden shock. My sister also thinks I fainted in the bathroom after getting scared of being alone. I don't know how will I ever tell her that I wasn't alone in that bathroom. But after I came from the hospital, she gave me an even more chilling news. She said when the helpers were taking me to the ambulance, the security guard told her this is the third time someone fainted in the women's washroom. The guard said, before me, two other girls were also found lying unconscious there. He told my sister that since a college girl committed suicide in the fourth bathroom of the right corner, these weird incidents have started to take place. The stadium authority was planning to rebuild this section, but due to the ongoing test match, the construction work has been put on hold. I don't know if whom I saw was a real ghost or just my imagination, but since then, I am very scared to go to any public washroom alone. One incident turned my first test match experience into a living nightmare.